Shalom Alahayakun and Kalutha. Very happy that you're here today with me. I'm doing another recording of the scriptures because it's easier for me to focus on them and get to the point that I want to share instead of getting too rambly and getting distracted with chat while I'm trying to record. Just makes it a little bit more smooth. There's a couple verses I'm going to share with you this morning that Spirit brought to me as I was in my study time, and I felt that they were very important for us to look at, especially in light of, of things that we have been indoctrinated with, and we are at the point where we are questioning those things. And so the sacred writings do help us be able to get a much clearer picture of what was attempted to be brought forward to us and kind of got a little waylaid in our translations that were given to us. They were for a purpose and for a season and for a reason. And now since the light has increasing and we have moved into the age of the water bearer, we are in the place where we actually can begin to see more fully what has been hidden waiting for us to find for such a time as this. So without further ado, let's just get right into the text. We're going to be looking at 2 Timothy 3, 15 and 16 today. Now, I'm not going to probably do a huge deep dive in the letters, but there are some points that I want to make in 2 Timothy 3, 15 particularly that I thought was really incredible <laughs> in moving into uh, 3.16, which is the verse that I was focusing on this morning, but I felt that I needed to go back in uh, one verse to be able to bring forth a little bit more context. So when we're taking a look at this here, uh, we can read the difference between uh, Dr. Etheridge's work and the King James Version. So Dr. Etheridge, and that from the childhood thou hast learned the holy writings, which are able to make thee wise to salvation through faith, which is in Yeshu Mashika. And King James saying, and that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. There are going to be probably some big bombs that <laughs> that are dropped here as we go through this. Uh, but let's just start here. As we're looking at this being from, interesting that we have the word men, that if you've watched what I've shared before, this means to be a part of like a stringed instrument. Uh, I liken it to coherence. But it's also manna. So it's like, it, literally, it's the word for manna. And it, it comes from a root word meaning it's like an inquiry. Who, why, when, how? And it is saying that the door through inquiry is going to be through our manna. Well, what does that mean? Well, through the living waters, we will find a seed. And it's meant for us to enjoin ourselves to so that we can have coherence in our life. When we get into the word childhood here, let me see if I can pull up. Here we go. Youth and childhood. We're going to dig a little bit deeper here. We're going to go into Marcus Jastro's. Again, this is a surface translation here. And so what does that mean? Well, with the surface translation is I don't have all my books laying out here in front of me. I'm just lightly touching on things for us to be able to move into some deep waters in the surface translations. But it is definitely not exhaustive by any means. So if the word that we're looking at here starts, it's the Tet Lamed Yod Aleph. And so we're going to look and see what is the closest that we can find with, here we go. You can see right here, this is talking of childhood and youth. Childhood and youth. Doesn't really go into any more than that. So what is this saying through the letters? If it's childhood and youth, and it's supposed to have an aleph on the end, what is the writing saying? What are we actually seeing here? Uh, it doesn't have the aleph on it, which is interesting because the aleph being removed means that as a child, a child doesn't hasn't entered into oneness yet. Because again, when we are born, we are actually born into separateness. When we leave the mother's womb is when we actually experience separateness 
from our divine nature, from being one with our mother and living into that place of separation. And that's really when the ego enters in. So from the childhood, the, the goal through this and the Vav Tav here, uh, it's, it's letting us know that this cough means to bend, allow, tame and open, bend, allow, tame and open. And it's showing that if we connect to this covenant, and again, the covenant is the covenant of fire. It's connected to Barashit. If you haven't seen my teaching on that, I recommend that you look it up in a search on our channel and type in uh, the word covenant, Barashit, Bet, sorry. Sometimes it's hard for me. I'm so used to spending time in the language that when I try to convert it back into English, the words, the letters aren't there. Uh, B-A-R-A. S H I T Barashit. And that should get you to the video that will explain the covenant of fire. So back to this, this is about taming, allowing, bending and uh, opening. And what is doing this? The Sofra. The Sofra is, uh, it's a, it's a book, Sefer, Sefer. And the Sofra through the writings that are holy the writings that are holy now this is this is very interesting um, because these writings should be leading us into oneness but yet the first thing that has to happen is we need to kind of tame ourselves and bend so not being stiff-necked so what does that mean Carrie what I'm asking you to do while we're going through these writings is to not hold such a tight stiff neck for the things that you have seen in the English verses, but to actually be open to the possibility that there are other things that we are missing in these translations. And that's why I painstakingly take the time to break these verses down so that you can see just how much is being missed in these translated works. So please allow yourself to bend and be flexible here as we're learning something new. And so regarding childhood, it's, it's actually showing us that we're wrestling with instruction, but there's been a spark, a power, a means and direction given to us on the inside so that we can actually connect to the shadow, complete the journey of our covenant, but we have to allow ourselves to be bent and to tame ourselves. Again, if you've heard me speak about before, the beast ego nature is the the egoic nature that needs to be tamed so that we can play well together in the sandbox. And the writings do do that. So what are we talking about here? We're talking about writings that will produce fruit and that will give you the ability to see and that are connected to a signet ring and a wedding ring that should hedge in, protect, prop, and support you and lead you into a place of holiness. And really, what is that really talking about? Well, it's the power of becoming a being of substance where you can enter into the absolute state of being of the divine nature. And this is the active form of fire. So again, connected to the covenant, the covenant of fire, we can see this in the process of becoming holy. And in this holiness, please comprehend too, that the word holiness comes from an etymology, meaning to be whole, W-H-O-L-E, as if never fractured, never parted into pieces, but to be whole. And then we move into the Alaf trainings. So the holy trainings that the writings that actually take you into the Alaf status, this is the active form of the Aleph. The Aleph is our final destination into entering into oneness unity. And this one is actually, again, this is connected to the writings that are then teaching you, giving you power, means, and direction that you can actually work with that are going to reveal the Shekinah, the Shekinah glory through the hidden side, uh, through the divine feminine, which then gives you the ability to enter into the absolute. It's like the, the language that allows you to enter into the absolute for the royal we, the aunt. This is thou, um, the word thou, but it really means the royal we. And right in the middle of it, we have a noon. This is a seed. This has to do with prodigy. A perpetual state of being has to do with heir to a throne. And on the outside flanking that isn't highlighted is the Aleph Toph. 
So the royal we are those that are of the Aleph Tav, the first and the last, the beginning and the end, the strong, the strength, the leaders of the covenant that will complete their journey, that have been given a seed that needs to germinate within them. And it's actually saying that through the sacred languages of the Aleph through the Tav, that this can be accomplished. Now, again, I'm saying that because this isn't the Greek letters here. This is literally saying that through the sacred languages of Hebrew Aramaic, the Aleph and the Tav, that the seed is then what starts to germinate so we can become the royal we and ascent, have the ascent to the throne. And then it talks about being able, Meshachach. This word is absolutely incredible when you see it because it contains the word Meshach. To be able um, is connected to being able to be anointed, to have the Christ anointing. But again, the difference, Mem Shin Chet, this cough here on the inside of the word meaning oil and anoint, again, is a word that is grasping a hold of the power, but you have to be able to be bent. You have to be not stiff necked. You have to be flexible. And this is going to be taming yourself on the inside. What is that dealing with? Well, the inside is where all the emotions are at in the inner man, our passions, our desires, all of our emotions. And this is taming that, allowing ourselves to be open and flexible so that the anointing can come. And then through the quantum toroidal aspect of it, um, the whirlwind that we see in the letters, what isn't highlighted on the outside of that is the word that means excitement. Dean is a city, excitement, to be um, stirred up. It also is the word for judge. So to be able to judge yourself, and when we talk about judging, we talk about self-adjudication, where then we can reorient ourselves to the things this, that we need to change in order to what? to draw ourselves out through the power that brings forth chai, that brings forth life in a new seed that is meant to be planted. Again, what do we have here? We have a seed that is germinating within that needs to be planted within the shadow realm of ourselves, which is in that hidden place uh, to be able to produce the fruit of it. Again, where does the seed sprout? In the place that's dark and hidden. And then it begins to germinate in the ground of our own soil within the soil of our heart. In the holy place, the holy of holies, the sacred chamber of the heart. All right. So we've got the sacred writings, making wise. That's the word right here. Chakam is the wise part. And interesting again that we have the word Dan in the front, which again is uh, a door to a new seed of life, judging again for self-adjudication purposes. That doll, it actually speaks of, and we see it here as well, that doll, it speaks of delivering ourselves from the things that separate us, things that are left dangling, things that are needing to be tied up. And it actually speaks about going into a deep well within where we can get the water that we need and remember I was we were talking about the aspect of water right here and again we have that word for Dan <laughs> at the beginning again that has water on the inside so going into the deep well of water within for self adjudication purposes reorientation of whatever we need to to deal with the chaos within so this is leading to wisdom and wisdom once we get to the place of wisdom, part of this in how it is written uh, that you wouldn't see is the word nach, which has to do with rest, entering into that place of rest. So we must go into the door within, deliver ourselves from our separation. And it's actually our job to deliver ourselves through self adjudication so we can enter into rest because this actually gives us the ability to tame ourselves, do what we need to on the inside so that we don't have anger, fear, resentment, hate, hatred um, ruling us or manipulating us. All of our pain and suffering that needs to be transmuted. And again, it's the end of this word has that cough again, which is letting us know that we need to be flexible in this process. Don't be so rigid. Don't be so stiff necked. But I want to show you one other thing that we have in this word for wisdom. We have... Um, 
if you were to darken that mem, we actually have a word, kun, that means to stand erect or to be established uh, in righteousness, justice, rectitude. And that is dealing with the waters of chaos and turning them into might. So we can see this process from this whole beginning, the theme that is happening here, that is talking about the writings. Before I go any further with that, because the last half is quite interesting to see in the last four words, I, I really want to bring forth this idea uh, that I, I had never really stopped and thought of when I was in the Christian church. But when it's talking about writings here, the New Testament was not here. Stop and think about that for a moment. When we were raised within the Christian doctrine, within the Christian church, we had given to us the Bible. And the Bible was said to be the Word of God, inspired by God. And so therefore everything in it was pertaining to us and it was the Word of God. But in the time of these writings, all they had was the Tanakh. All they had was the Old Testament. I'm going to say that again. All they had was the Old Testament. The New Testament hadn't been quote-unquote canonized yet. These were writings that were being passed around. So we aren't talking about the New Testament here. That should make you pause for a moment. The Holy Writings connected to the Tanakh, the Old Testament. So now what are we talking about? If it's the Tanakh that is leading to the, and it's the Old Testament because the New Testament wasn't around, now we have the writings that make one wise unto salvation. Oh my gosh! Please see that. They are the instruction. We have a Lamed added into the word Chaya, which is the word for life and salvation. They are the instructions of salvation. So when we were given the Constantine Evangelion Gospel, of Constantine that was based on the death, the burial, and the resurrection of a man named Jesus. But this is saying that the writings, the Old Testament, were those instructions that we were to be taught from. This is this changes the whole game here. And the Lamed is also connected to that which brings light, that which brings illumination, that brings authority, authority of life, authority authority of salvation that we learn and we study and we compile and we grow and it's the knowledge so that we're learning so we can turn and teach and they are meant to poke prod sting urge goad us into bringing kaya back and and just to let you know this is the active form of chava the mother of all living because chava was taken out of adam out of humanity, out of mankind. Chava, the mother of all living, was taken out. So the writings are the instructions how to bring Chava in its active form, meaning there's work. There is work that must be done. That's what this little yod is. There's a work that must be done, a spark that is within us, that these teachings then cultivate and activate and bring forth life. Man, completely different to be able to see and verify that which I shared regarding the Constantinian message as being completely separate because this is saying that the Tanakh has the way of salvation in it. Now let me go into here because I know that some of you might be going, but wait a minute, it's the faith in Ishu Mashiach, Jesus the Christ. I comprehend that we're challenging foundations here and I know that it can be really shaky and I can know I know how uncomfortable this is because I've had to wrestle all of this myself. Part of the key is in this word right here for faith. So when we say it is faith within Yeshu Mashika, we need to draw attention to these two letters here that have been added. These two letters that have been added in front of faith means in her, in her. Who is in her? 
Then we have the word Amon. I dealt with that the other day on Facebook, and my husband will be dealing with it uh, again this coming weekend. We are going to drill down into the word faith, Amon. And it's really, I can say this. Remember how I was sharing with you right here that men has to do with manna, but it also has to do with being a part of, like a chord, like a string instrument, um, you know, like a harp being struck, beautiful resonance, a frequency, a vibration. Well, that is part of the word for faith. But aman in its static form is one to be a part of the one. But this is the active, to be part of the one chord, the one resonance, not being in a state of dissonance, but in harmony, in resonance, in frequency that is done through her. Now, in the time of the writings, who was her in her? It was Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene was the disciple whom Ishu loved. Mary Magdalene is the one that took over the teachings for Ishu after he was taken away and was killed. So in her, so this is saying having faith in her, that that which she is bringing about through a resonance, through a, a frequency to be a part of is so that you can fully connect to the covenant that then completes you so that you can enter into the Ta, the sacred inner chamber of the heart where intimacy is then expressed and has been fully consummated. This is the seed, noon, out of Mem Vav Tav, the seed out of death. Remember I shared with you guys a while ago that it was, the writing said that Ishu was the firstborn of the dead. Not from the dead, but of the dead. This means, this is something that we need to connect to. When we enter in and we are born from our mother, we have already entered into death. Now, I know that sounds like an oxymoron because we're giving birth into life, but death is separation. When we enter in and we are born, we are born already as the dead. Because again, what are we trying to find? What was taken out of Adam? Chaya, the mother of all living, was taken out. So when we enter in, we are already separated from the union with the divine source. We have to pursue it. We have to be taught what is Chaya. So this is saying that in her, these teachings, if you can have faith in that which she was sharing was the seed of the new state of being out of death. And I'm connecting that because Chaya is right here. And it's saying the teachings from the Tanakh. Please grasp a hold of that through the Akkadian flame letters, not the Septuagint, through the letters that bring forth Chaya. We are going to, I'm going to bring this and we are going to land this plane in 2 Timothy 3.16 so that you can see exactly what I'm saying here about what really the holy writings are. So in the time that the early Hellenized Jews, they had the Septuagint, but then there was a group that came in the time of Ishu that then were given access to the Torah scrolls through the Akkadian flame letters that had actually the Chaya in them. So this is pointing us into a direction to get us out of the Namosa, the Greek law, into the Hebrew Torah, the covenant of light, the covenant of fire, where it allows you to flow as water that you find salvation in. So in her, again, this divine feminine frequency that is showing you that you must build this, and this is actually a seed, that little Degesh, there's a dot in there. There is the seed that has been planted, a sperma, that has been planted. I can only use some things that you guys are recognizing. I don't like using Greek words, but unfortunately we've been in this Greco-Romanized, Hellenized version <laughs> of things, and we need to be able to bring it back around to that which really is bringing Kaya. So in her, in having faith, faith also means to trust and believe, to foster and support as a parent, as a nurse. Okay? So that we can enter into this. So in her is the door into the teachings that Ishu Mashika brought. 
So she is delivering the message of Ishu Mashika. Stop. <laughs> Dalit means to deliver. To deliver what? The Chaya from Ishu Mashika. Remember, I had shared with you that Ishu in the writing said, I am light and salvation. And I just connected that the writings of the Old Testament were of Chaya, of salvation. So she was delivering the message that Ishu Mashika was bringing from the sacred writings of the Tanakh. That should cause you to pause for a moment. Now let's move on. We're now moving into 2 Timothy 3.15 or 16. For all scripture which from the Spirit is written is profitable for doctrine, for rebuke, and for correction, for instruction, which is in righteousness. Okay, I want you to notice something very, very interesting here. We have Etheridge's translation of spirit. We have King James of God. Again, big difference. The word God is not used in this verse at all. Allah, Aloha, Allah, Abba. That is not used in this writing at all. Ruka is, that's spirit. That is spirit. So we need to collapse this, that all scripture is given by inspiration of God, because as soon as we see that capital G God, it's like, ooh, we can't question any of this, right? It's of God. Well, again, the, the trouble is, is our definition of what God is that gets us in a mess and gets us all bound up. Ruka. You might recall for some of you who have been hanging out with me for a while that we did a, uh, we went into 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and in the, the love chapter itself when it said that love was spirit and they did not translate the word Ruka. They just said love is and then they went on to describe love but it starts out as saying love is spirit. Now, this should connect some dots here because we literally have a permutation for Chava, the mother of all living. The mother of all living is the spirit that raises us up out of our poor and destitute state. Now, this is, I just love this. I love this so much. I want you to also know that when Etheridge capitalizes things here, this is because in the writings themselves, the words are written in bigger letters. And that's why he does the best he can to be able to try to translate for you what is being in these letters that are trying to be conveyed to us. Kaflamed is the word. Um, it may be for and f for all, uh, but <laughs> it's also the word that means bride. It also means crown and it means complete and all. So if this is for, this is for the bride to complete her journey so she can receive her crown. And then, then it goes into scripture. Now, please, I need to show you something here. <laughs> that scripture in etymology is from a Latin word, scriptura. But it also comes down to write. And it's from the Proto-Indo-European root, scrib. We know this as scribes. Scribes are the sofra, okay? So let's go back. So the scribes are the sofra. The sofra are the ones that wrote the original writings in Hebrew. So if we go back and connect that, when we were looking at 315, sofra. This was not translated works into the Septuagint. This is the Sofra. And the scribes were the ones that would take the Torah scrolls and make new Torah scrolls. This isn't the Septuagint here. Okay. Now when we get into scripture, scriptura, this is saying the writings. Now I shared the other day that the Ketav or the Ketuva was a wedding contract, but I don't like the word contract because that has negative implications to it. I want to collapse and refill. 
It's like a wedding constitution so you can enjoin yourself. So let's see what the word constitute is. Constitute is to be part of a whole, to be a part of a whole. Think of men to be part of a stringed instrument that's being played, a chord, a resonance, a frequency, or to combine to form a whole. I don't know if you guys are connecting to that. But this is meant for us to, again, bend, be flexible, allow and tame ourselves so that we can complete the covenant journey on the inside as the bride. This is all about the bride writings. And again, this is speaking of the Tanakh, the Old Testament, the bride writings which are the door within, through the Spirit. Now, this is the reason why I wanted to share with you that I could show you that this had to specifically do with the sacred writings, not the English, not the Greek Septuagint. The word for scripture, and then they're saying it's written, the scripture that is written through the Aleph Tav. The Aleph Tav is added to this word. The Aleph Tav is a summary of the sacred languages. It is an idiom. So if I were to say to you the alphabet in English, you would know that I was speaking of A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. <laughs> that takes a long time to be able to say all those letters. But if I say the alphabet, you know exactly what I'm talking about. If someone were to say the Aleph Tav, you would know exactly what they were talking about. They would be talking about the sacred languages, the Aleph through the Tav, as being the strength of the covenant. Aleph, one of the meanings is strength or strong. Tav means complete, also means covenant and sign. You would know this if you had more of the Greek um, influence as the Alpha and Omega. Those are the first and last letters of the Greek language, the Greek alphabet. And in this case, it's the Aleph and the Tav here, which is the original form of it. I did want to show you something here that um, the first usage of the first and the last, because I was connecting this to the, our writings in the book of Revelation, where we see I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. So what does first and the last look like? This is pretty amazing when you can see this. First, this is uh, Rosh. This is part of Bereshit. This is where we get Roshit in the beginning. But notice that we have the word fire here. Fire. Then we have the letter that means head or top or first. First fire or on the head fire is or fire upon the head. Where can we maybe connect this to? The upper room in the book of Acts, where they had tongues of fire upon their head. This has to do with, and this word also, um, rosh means to be the top, to be the head, to be a first fruit. Now, when we get into the place where we have the last, we have a char. Now, I need you to see this. Chet is in the middle. This has to do, this is the esoteric letter for life, connected to chava. The mother of all living that is found on the inside but what flanks it is the aleph resh aleph resh is the shortened form of light life's light or salvation's light and fire oh i've shared this with you before those of you who are on patreon have heard this many many times this is the making of phi the light is linear it is a line Fire is circular. You can connect this to phallus and womb if you want in us making love, entering back into our first love of being as an unconditional state of being in absolute. This is where the seed, the sperma is planted through the phallus in the womb, where we make love within ourselves to birth ourselves anew to be born again. Oh, I hope you're connecting that. Being born again has to do with our own womb and phallus where we enjoin the masculine and feminine energy together of light and fire 
that linear and the circle that when they are connected together creates phi, negentropy, negative for entropy, where there's no longer chaos and destruction and self-decay, but now we are moving into a self-ordering uh, state of being that produces kaya. Man, I hope you guys are catching what I'm saying here. This is a big flippin' deal. <laughs> it's a big deal. So the Ruka's job through these writings is to bring forth Kha. This is like the Mercha Ba. This is Kha that is found in the central place of, ple the central place of being, Chaya, connect to our heart chakra being fully illuminated and coming online. This is most important. This is also the place, the Kha would be the central place, the, the center stand in the menorah, which is to be a part of light. Um, it's called the Shemesh candle, which is the light that serves and lights all the other branches in our chakra system. This is a very big deal. In this Ruka, by the way, we have the word Dabar. Dabar is the word. <laughs> it's literally, and it means to order. So please connect this. This is a word that means the word that is exactly connected to the Tanakh, the Old Testament, that self orders itself. And what is it? It's a door within that raises you up so that you can be bar, so you can feed upon. You are then in the place of winnowing yourself as the selected, the chosen. Bar also means an heir to the throne, a parent heir to the throne, meaning those who go through the writings have winnowed themselves, have, have delivered themselves from separation. They are selected to be heirs to the throne. The other part is in the Bethresh in the Aleph here, which is also found, this is saying that bara means to create. And in order to be a creator, you must connect to the salvation Chaya within. And the letter Vav here is a transmutable sign that is bigger than I can even really truly convey to you. But this is showing, this is that narrow path between what is and what is not. That which exists and that which does not exist. It's that place of the connection of beyond from what is seated in higher places and bringing it into our earthly realm, the ethereal realm into the terrestrial realm within our own self. The very narrow path that few find, which is salvation. Through the Aleph Tav, through the sacred languages that are meant for the bride to receive her crown and complete her journey. So amazing to see what is saying there for that. All right, now we need to go into profitable. This is an incredible world. That word, incredible word. So profitable. Let's take a look. We're going to do a deeper dive into what is profitable. All right, let's bring this up here. Profitable. Where are you? Oh, that's the wrong verse. That was in the previous verse. So we're going to go into this one here. What is profitable? Right here. No, here, sorry. Profitable. Yitar. Yod Tav Resh. Yod Tav Resh. Well, we need to dig in here a little bit. And I'm going to go into Marcus Jastro's tier to give us a fuller meaning. And through... Yitar, we're going to find Muthar. Where are you? <clears throat> here we are. Muthar. This is part of this word here. And when we take a look at it, you can see that it's super abundance. Preference and advance. Super abundance, preference and advance. <clears throat> so it goes beyond being useful. We're talking about super abundance. <laughs> okay, super abundance. Now, what is so amazing about this super abundance? We actually have the word for death here. Death 
raised up. So remember, I just was expressing to you how when we are born in, we are born in already in a dead state of being because we need to find Kaya. We need to find the mother of all living again. So this is saying that there is super abundance to be found in the, the writings that raise you up out of death. Ren, so that you have songs of deliverance, joyous cries that have actually been prayer, na, I, we beseech thee, that have been the answer to prayer. We have been raised up out of death through the sacred writings. Is means he, she, it is they. <laughs> It's the revelation that is coming forth that needs to be connected to this place of the transmutable sign where we're finding the narrow path that few find. Doctrine. These are the Yalaf teachings. This isn't the Lamed teachings. <clears throat> Excuse me. This is not the, Aleph, the Lamed teachings. This is the Yalaf teachings. Why is the Yalaf teaching so different? Well, there's a few things that I want to show you here. Yalaf in itself is Yod Lamed Pei. And it is showing you that the that Vav, that transmutable sign, has been added. These writings allow you to connect to your heart fully. And the Yalaf is connected is the active form of the Aleph. Aleph is the letter for God. Aleph is the letter for first fruit, chief, head, beginning, first expanse, quantum realm, the place where all of creation begins. In the dark place of the quantum realm that gives you access to being a creator. And I was already showing you that over here. So this is the instruction that comes, the staff of authority. And interesting enough that both staffs are given here. Why is this important? Because between the first staff of authority and the second staff of authority, the first teachings of mother that tame you, that actually allow you to play well with others in the sandbox, and the second staff, which then is giving you the authority of the hidden nature, the first staff is the staff of rulership as a king-queen, the second staff is the rulership of an emperor, the territory size is different. We have a combination of two letters here that mean luminous manifestation. This is luminous manifestation that happens between the two staves of authority that happen within. This is igniting. This is flame on. This is the luminous manifestation of the sun and the moon that are reflecting the light found within the two teachings of authority so that you can pana. It's another word here, pana, turn, face, and appear as the answered prayer. Now is the mouth that is speaking, the speech that is within the speech, the language within the language, the hidden aspects that come with the same prayer, but are now speaking this new seed of life that is all about oneness, unity. The mystery of the many who are one. So again, connected to surplus, <laughs> abundance. Now let's move into the next word. The next word that we're going to take a look at here. Let's see if I can pull it up if I didn't close it out. I did close it out, so we have to pull it up again. <clears throat> abundance and surplus. The instructions. Now we have the word for reproof, but this is so much more because I want you to see something. This is saying reproof here, but it's a cough noon in its root. So cough noon down here, it also means righteousness, righteousness, uprightness, godliness, rectitude, and justice. Okay. So same word. So again, many times when I go into this Peshitta here through Dukrana, they don't put all the meanings in. There's still a bias of what they're wanting you to see, but there's so much more there. So I needed you to connect both this kin and this kin here <clears throat> into righteousness. So these are the teachings of righteousness, of justice, of rectitude, of godliness that isn't denying its power because the power is in unifying yourself 
into oneness unity. And this is very interesting here because kun, the ken, this actually has two vavs that are here, which technically, because of this Degesh, actually shows that there's three. <laughs> it's just one is hidden. One is hidden. Vav in Gamatria has the level, the number six. So we have two sixes standing by side by side with the third six being hidden. Six, six, six. Now, before any of you get all freaked out about six, 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 six is connected to the number of man. It's connected to the Cayutha, the living beings that found salvation that have connected to their shadow, they completed the covenant, and they entered into the sacred chamber of the heart. The same word, Kayutha, are those creatures that open the scrolls in the book of Revelation. So 6-6 six, six by itself is the number of books that we have within the Bible. So for those of us who are reading this today, we are seeing that everything that has been inspired by the Ruka that is given to us, we have the totality of not only the Old Testament, which actually is the instructions of salvation, we have the New Testament, which is revealing the salvation message from the feminine aspect. Aramaic is feminine in nature, and the Hebrew is masculine. Masculine builds the form, Aramaic fills the form with the fire, and it's the light and fire connected together at creation of Phi. So this is one who is standing as established. Let's go into Kun so that you can see a little bit more of what this word is. Yes, it means to be firm, but I want you to see other things. It means to be firm, but it also means to be set up, established, fixed. It can mean um, stable, secure, and enduring, securely de determined, to be directed, a right of ways, steadfast, fixed to right, Prepare, be ready, be prepared, arranged to set in order. Negentropy, negative of the entropic state of decay. To be ordered of the temple. We are the temple. Set up and established as king, as faithfulness, the heart of the humble, to accomplish to make firm are you seeing what it's saying here prepared as a gift provided for furnished to direct the face for established of the throne being prepared to be established of the throne to be fastened that's what we're talking about here and again the lamed has been added so we need to connect ourselves transmute ourselves through the teachings and Lamed Kaf is a shortened form of a word that means a walk, your halak. Something that is being revealed for you, instructions that you need to be flexible within so that it is actually taming you, that is power that you are grasping, that is allowing you to be bent and to be open, not closed, to be fully opened. Because being fully open is what allows the illumination, the full manifestation to happen, where all the chakras are online. Every single one of them, every demon has been cast out of the chakra. A demon is a choked off chakra. So in all of the areas, everything being fully opened, which is an answer to the prayer. A new seed that has provided the way into oneness, holiness, wholeness. Now when we move into the next word, as translated as correction, we have the Tov Resh Zadi. So we're going to go into Marcus Jastros to help us with this. Tov Resh Zadi. Now, this was something that we shared a long time ago, and it's I really want you to be able to connect yourself to this. This means an, uh, it has to do with to go around to espy, to be awake, to turn and order. Why is that so important? Because that is the root of the essence of what this is saying here. Tur. So to espy, to turn, to order, all the things that I just shared. This is the covenant of light. This is 
if you say this, this is Ur, which is how you say light, the covenant of light that turns you and orders you. This is self-ordering negentropy. So now you're negative of the entropic state of decay. This is light's journey. The zadi means to journey, to hunt and chase, to spy out the land, to be spies in the land where you're hunting and chasing how to what? Enter into union, to become whole. That's what these writings are about. The katav, to constitute constitute and enjoin yourself to be a part of the whole. So then we have instructions in righteousness. But this is what I want to show you about the instructions of righteousness here. So we already had the Elaf scripture, the doctrine, how to enter in one. And then we have the instructions, the teachings. Lamed means Discipline, or this is the root of the word disciple. This is how to be made as a disciple, the tamadihu. But this is not the tamadihu. These are those that were the disciples that were being discipled, that were raised up out of their bitterness within. These teachings, Lamed, Mem, try to get this so you can see this, Lamed, Mem, Dalit, is literally how you spell out the symbol Lamed. And it means to instruct, to teach, to compile, to put together, to learn knowledge, have knowledge. And the Resh was added. What does this mean? Well, the Resh is connected to being poor and destitute, which is our entropic state of being, and then raised up to be a first fruit, top highest first fruit leader. This is saying that we are being delivered from what? This bitter place of being poor and destitute, where now we've connected to the shadow side, the hidden elements, where we've entered into the sacred chamber, Ta, the innermost chamber of our being, the innermost hidden chamber of the temple, the bridal chamber, where we have now made sacred union, intimacy. This is the creation of the phallus in the womb that have created negentropic state of being as a new state where you have not only made love, but you have been birthed anew. Immaculate conception. This is a big deal if you can pick up what I'm laying down for you here. Righteousness again. What is the difference between this coon and this coon? This is a very big deal when you see this here. The Aleph has been now entered in. You are one within your heart. You are one with God as God. You are one with the quantum realm. You are one with everything. You are now hold, whole and healed as holy within. As the form of godliness that has the power within. Not denying the power, but actually being of power. Strength, first, top, head, God. Righteousness, justice, and rectitude. Because you went through the door, delivered yourself from separation, built yourself, grasped a hold of the power that was necessary by making you flexible, no longer stiff-necked, where you tamed yourself. You'd entered into the sacred union within. Now the energies within you are not warring. Your higher self, your lower self. Your Hallel, your Lila, the Christ, the Magdalene, have been unified, which is a new seed that has been brought forth, that has been fully connected to in consummation, in intimacy, as having completed the journey into sacred union as one.
Righteousness is the place that salvation brings in union, and it all stems from the Tanakh. So please comprehend that these writings that we are talking about here in these last two verses have nothing to do with the New Testament because the New Testament wasn't even being written. These were letters being passed around. This shakes the tree. This shakes the Constantin Constantinian Evangelion, evangelical message, and bring us into the salvific message that Ishu was bringing forth that through in her, she was fostering and supporting and nursing people back into the faith by delivering the message of Ishu Mashika. She was taking it upon herself to bring forth the message of the sacred writings from the Tanakh. Ooh, I hope you guys picked this up. This was a big teaching today. I know it went long. Thank you for hanging out with me. I hope you got something out of this. I hope this helped, helped re, um, reorient you to the truth of what the salvific message really is. It's about getting our flame on. It's about us becoming seraphim messengers instead of the cherub, where the letter of cherub starts out with separation that is then supposed to move into life and expanding life but it must become a burning one it must find chava again the mother of all living and bringing it back into adam into all of mankind and that is what we are doing here and i am doing my best through letter through verse sharing with you these truths so that you can fully comprehend why these writings were given to us their purpose to get our flame on this is much we can celebrate to and celebrate with chadutha chadutha halva